number two opened up. Major League Baseball is wanting to play one playing in front of empty stadiums now. Players are. Actually, we're not assembled. We're asked to not assemble in groups of ten or more. Whatever. <laughs> I've noticed I've noticed people say that all the time. Yeah. It's either more than ten or ten or, or more than nine or ten or more. I'll read it once it's more. Fifth in the process. It all was a lot better than it was. My goodness, it had room to improve. Oh, is the phone still not working? Tell Pooh I can hear her too. She did last week too. Yeah, tell, tell her I can hear her too. Because she's going to have to calm it down down there at the house. Man, yeah, Scott wasn't here last week. Which I said, I, I, I listened. I said, no, okay, she's not here. I don't hear her. <laughs> she can hear you now. <laughs> Her skin off of my nose. She has some fun. I got one o'clock. Welcome to the service of the Washington Street Church of Christ in St. Albans, West Virginia. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic in our world today, we have been asked to not assemble in groups of more than 10. For that reason, a few of us have come together to assist you in your worship today. Today we will sing, pray, commune, set aside our monetary contribution, and study God's word together. Although we are bringing this to you via the internet, you can still worship. This internet service is not a permanent replacement for a meeting together, but a temporary way to worship together while following the recommendations of the government. We are so glad you are with us this afternoon. If there's anything, that, if there's anything we can do for you spiritually, 
do not hesitate to contact us. You may visit our website at www.washingtonstcopc.org or email wvdj105 at aol.com. You may also find us on Facebook at Washington Street C of C. Please remember those on our prayer list. There are many. And the prayer list can be found on the Facebook group page. I'll now turn the service over to Kevin McKenzie. First song this afternoon will be number two. Hymn number two, Amazing Grace. <clears throat> Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was, was lost, but now. Oh. 
Him as my soul, my life, my Supper. Uh, if you have the emblems of the Lord's Supper with you, we ask that you uh, feel free to take those uh, as, as we do here as well. Uh, for the Lord's Supper, I'd like to read uh, Luke chapter 22, verse 14. Uh, and when the hour came, he reclined at table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I've earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it's fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you now, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, the cup, after they had eaten, saying, This cup is poured out for you, and is the new covenant in my blood. Would you please bow with me as we ask for a blessing of the bread? Father, we come before you uh, dispersed but thankful. We are uh, grateful for Christ's sacrifice on the cross, and we ask your blessing on this bread, uh, which represents his broken body. We ask your blessing for those who partake of it here uh, and those who partake of it uh, elsewhere, uh, worshiping with us. Uh, we ask your forgiveness and your mercy and grace in our current crisis. In Christ's name, amen. amen. We now ask for the, uh, would you please pray with me as we ask for the blessing of the fruit of the vine. Dear Lord, we ask for your blessing on this fruit of the vine, uh, which represents Christ's blood, uh, his sacrifice, his blood that was shed for us. We are grateful for that sacrifice, and we realize our salvation is only possible through him. We are grateful for the opportunity to still worship you and remember his sacrifice this morning or this afternoon, uh, and, and to remember Christ's sacrifice in the midst of our current distress. Uh, we ask all these things in your blessings and forgiveness in Christ's name. Amen. So while this concludes the Lord's Supper, uh, separate apart from the Lord's Supper, we are uh, told to give. Uh, toward the work of the church. Uh, and we encourage everyone watching to uh, set aside those contributions for the next time we meet in order that uh, they might be given there. Before Brother Scott brings us the lesson of the afternoon, we're going to sing number 397. 397, I'll fly away. <coughs> Some glad morning when this life is over. When the 
shadows of your side have grown. I fly away like a bird from prison bars that flown. I fly away. I fly away, oh glory. I fly away in the morning when I die. Hallelujah, by and by. I fly away. Just a few more weary days and then. Good afternoon. We appreciate you being along with us this afternoon. I don't know how many times I'll say morning while I'm up here because we're used to being here in the morning, but I'll try to remember to say afternoon. But for our folks over around Denver and over in California, if you're watching, it still is morning. So we'll play it that way. I'm glad that you could be along with us, though. You're not here with us in the building. Of course, we are doing our best to uh, follow the government's guidelines, uh, the health and safety officials who have told us the best things to do. And that's, and that's why we're coming to you, just like so many other congregations, uh, via the Internet or Facebook or wh whatever you may be watching us on this afternoon. But we appreciate you being here. And when we do get to meet together again, we hope that you come here and join us. Uh, and when we meet together, we will normally meet on Sunday mornings at 9.30 for Bible study, and then we'll start worship at 10.30. We'll have a second worship at 6 p.m. each Sunday evening. And then we come together for a Bible study on Wednesday evening. So you're welcome to join us as, as soon as everything goes back to normal. Uh, but as we are in these difficult times, let us remember that God is always there. God will never leave us. No matter what we may think or what others might try to get us to think, God will never leave us. Only we can pull away from God. And even then, God is still there when we're ready to come back. You know, maybe you remember back in the 80s, um, the, the movie E.T., some of you all who are my age were probably dragged to the movie theater three and four, maybe ten times because your parents loved that movie so much that they wanted to see it. Well, you might remember when you were watching E.T. that the E.T., this extraterrestrial alien little fella, brings a flower back to life that had died. And later in the movie when E.T. himself is beginning to die, that, that flower starts to die as well. Well, his buddy, Elliot, the, the, the little child who, well, the young man who found him, who discovered E.T. on Earth, uh, he's mourning the loss of E.T., and, and it's hurting his feelings really bad. He hates to see his, his close friend die. But he's looking at this flower that, that, was, that was wilting and dying because E.T. was dying too. And, and suddenly it, it starts to spring back to life, the flower does. And immediately, Elliot becomes excited, and, and he looks at E.T. because he knows that if that flower is coming back to life, that means E.T. has life in him as well and is coming back to life. So Elliot found strength in the fact that his friend E.T. was coming back. Now, E.T. was going to live, and Elliot was going to be okay. This lesson this morning involves the origin of and the boundaries of our strength, the strength that we have in our lives and, and how far that those boundaries reach and, and what's contained inside of us. Let me explain that a little bit better. Right now, there are many of people who are off work. 
Uh, due to the, the, the health and safety of our population, we've been, we've been asked to stay home. Things have changed a little bit. And many people are even working from home now. This time is allowing us to live life a little bit differently. Not having to get up, perhaps, and go to work every day. Not having to get up and go to school every day. Some folks maybe actually get a little bit of relaxing throughout the day that they may not have before. But that not having to get up and go to work or have this regular leave the house uh, mentality sometimes tends to relax us a little bit. So for some people, it's a dream come true getting to, getting to work from home for those who weren't all ready. However, after it's all said and done and you find yourself back on the daily grind of life, doing the same thing over and over, that exhaustion sets in. Yet again, it's just like coming off a of vacation. When you go on vacation uh, for, for a week or two, you're, you, you go wherever and you forget about work. You forget about all the stuff you have to do back home. But when it's time to come back off of vacation, it takes a little bit of willpower and a lot of strength to actually get up and go that Monday morning when you come back. I got some coworkers and that, that go on two or three or four vacations a year. And, and especially one when he comes back, he's like, Scott, I'm not sure that I didn't think about retiring this morning. <laughs> because, you know, he can retire, but, but he comes to work anyway. Uh, and, and, and that's the way we all feel when we have to come back to work after that great vacation and, and, and it takes that strength and that strength has to come from within because we know that if we don't go back we'll get fired and if we get fired we won't have any money and if we don't have any money we can't survive so it takes a lot of willpower just to go to work or to get up and go back to school from time to time but this morning I want to talk about strength but I want to talk about it a little bit differently just like Elliot from E.T. Christians have a reason to get excited. We were once dead, but we were brought back to life. Are we committed to that life is the question. You know, we've heard it said, well, the sun's going to rise again. And, and people often use that term when they're maybe talking about, well, today didn't go so well. Something bad happened. But they'll say, there's going to be a tomorrow. The sun's going to rise again. But we've got to understand that we are not promised another day on this earth. We're not promised another minute, a second. We're not promised another day on this earth. Often we like to think that we are, though. However, those of us who are Christians must rest assured that there will be another dawn. You hear, it's the dawning of a new day. Understand that as Christians we can know that there will be another dawn. I want to read to you the, the words of a song that was written by a, a, a great fellow that I've known all my life, one of those inspirational guys that you knew growing up. His name's Kim Matthews. A lot of you might know him. Um, but he, he, he wrote these songs, and he may have had some help uh, from, from some of the, the, the boys that sang along with him, but it's called Two Dawns. It says, There's a light through my window, that brings a new day. There's a light all around me that guides my way. It's a light that is different from the light of morn. It's a light that's been with me since I was reborn. And I'm walking in the light of the sun of his love that shines from the Father in heaven above. And at night for the faithful, this light's never gone. And each morning, for the Christian, there's always two dawns. And it goes on, it says, And this light all around me, it goes far and wide, but the other light around me goes deep inside. It's a light never ending, a light that will last. For the faithful walking in it, no shadows are cast. And I'm walking in the light of the Son of His love that shines from the Father in heaven above, and at night for the faithful, this light's never gone. And each morning for the Christian, there's always two dawns. What a beautiful song from a beautiful heart. And to hear it sung, it's even better. 
But we need to be reminded that we too can have two dawns if we are committed to God. We can have two dawns if we are committed to God. The only way that someone can go to heaven is to be a Christian, be committed to God. Joshua 24, 15 reads, If it is disagreeable in uh, your sight to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether it be the God of your fathers that your fathers served, which are beyond the river, or the God of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And even Solomon in all of his, his wisdom, his, his possessions, and his glory saw the awesome power of serving and being committed to the Lord. We read in Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 1. Remember also your creator in the days of your youth before the evil days come and the years draw near when you will say, I have no delight in them. And then down to verses 13 and 14, it says, The conclusion, when all has been heard, is fear God and keep His commandments. Because this applies to every person. For God will bring every act to judgment. Everything which is hidden, whether it is good or evil. So we can understand that we will have two dawns if we're committed to God. We will have that other light around us that goes deep inside. And we will have two dawns if we're committed to Jesus. We read in Philippians chapter 3 at verse 7, But whatever things were gained to me, those things I have counted as loss for the sake of Christ. More than that, I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them but rubbish, so that I may gain Christ and may be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own, but derived from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ Jesus. The righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith, he says, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death in order that I may attain the resurrection from the dead. You see, Paul left behind his status and the status in the Jewish community. He, he was somebody in the Jewish religion. People looked up to him, and, and he did things for the Jewish community that others wouldn't do. But he left all of that. He left being somebody for the knowledge of Christ. In Philippians chapter 3 and verse 4 it says, Although I myself might have confidence even in the flesh, if anyone has mine to put confidence in the flesh, I far more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the nation of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to the righteousness which is in the law, found blameless. Now, Paul knew Jesus Christ. To know somebody is to know more than just the facts about that person. I know about George Washington. I know that George Washington was the first president of the United States. I know that it is a myth that he chopped down a cherry tree and uh, said, you know, I'm not going to tell a lie and all that stuff. But those were just stories. I know those things about George Washington. But I didn't know George Washington. When we get to know Jesus, we will know more than just the facts about his life. We will be one with him. We can open up the Bible, <coughs> excuse me, and we could, we could see all kinds of facts about Jesus Christ. But until we get into the Word, until we learn about Jesus and want to be one with Him, we don't truly know Him. We will want to do what Jesus did. We will want to be the example that Jesus was when we truly know Him. John chapter 15 at verse 1 says, I am the vine, and 
The Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him will bear much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Jesus tells us that if we are committed to him, we will attach ourselves to him and we will become a part of him. And if we are attached to the vine, the fruit will come. We can have two dawns if we're committed to Jesus. We can have two dawns if we are committed to the body. You see, members of the body of Christ are all different. Some can lead singing, some can teach, some can preach, some can do other things that we may not see them do. Everybody's not the same. However, we're committed to each other because we are committed to Jesus. Though there may be many members, but yet one body, as we read in 1 Corinthians 12 and, and Romans chapter 12, Acts chapter 2, 44 says, And all those who had believed were together and had all things in common. And they began selling their property and possessions and were sharing them with all as anyone might have need. Day by day, continuing with one mind in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord was adding to their number day by day those who were being saved. They were together. Though they had different things that they did in the community, though they spoke different, looked different, ate different food, wore different clothes perhaps, they still all loved Jesus. So therefore loving Jesus, they were able to come together as one body in Christ and they were able to support each other and as, as members of the church we must be willing and able to support each other now we who are strong ought to bear the weaknesses of those who are without strength and not just to please ourselves Romans chapter 15 verse 1 and Galatians chapter 6 and verse 1 says brethren if anyone is caught in any trespass you who are spiritual restore such one with the spirit of gentleness each one looking to yourself so that you too will not be tempted. Bear one another's burdens and thereby fulfill the law of Christ. You see that sometimes we just need to renew our strength. We need our strength restored. We've got to get into God's word. We've got to get into each other's lives. And we've got to help each other rebuild sometimes. And we've got to help each other stay together. We've got to be committed to each other we've got to be committed to the work because we can have two dawns if we're committed to the work if you are committed to Jesus and committed to the body the work's going to follow as we read in Luke 19 10 it says for the son of man has come to seek and save that which was lost and if you remember we talked about being one with Jesus we talked about doing what he would do he came to seek and save that which was lost so we must be doing the same things Hebrews 3 13 but encourage one another day after day as long as it is called today so that none of you will be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin and Colossians 3 16 says let the word of Christ dwell in you richly with all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual psalms, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And Mark 16, 15, what we refer to as the Great Commission, says, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. The work will follow if we truly love the Lord. And God will take care of us if we are committed to him and committed to Jesus, committed to the body, and committed to the work. We need that strength to be rebuilt. People who have perhaps 
been in, uh, sick in the bed for a long time, have to be rehabilitated before they get out. They, they have to sometimes learn to walk again better. Or maybe you've, you've had a cast on your leg or your arm and you have to go to physical therapy and, and learn how to use that arm again before it, it fully has its strength. We as Christians sometimes need to just go back to the, I'm using this for lack of a better term, the gym. <laughs> the spiritual gym. Or, or go back to the physician to renew our strength. And we can do that by working together as well. We will be committed to the work as Christians if no one else is. We will visit the sick, those who are lost, even if our church doesn't have a visitation program. We'll, we'll gather clothes and food for those in need, even if there's not a program at, at the church. We won't quit because things aren't exciting enough. We don't quit because others quit. And we don't quit because we're committed to Jesus. And that's where we find our strength. We can wake up each morning to a new day. We get out of bed and, and do whatever we're going to do during the day, whether it's work or school, things around the house, whatever the case may be. We have the strength to do that. Not only do we have the light of the daytime so that we can see what we're doing, but we have the light of Jesus. Are we committed to that light? For the faithful walking in it, no shadows are cast. There's always two dawns. Question is, do you realize that? Are you a part of that? Are you a Christian who knows that even though this world is passing by and, and one of these days we're all going to be gone from this earth, do you realize that you're going to have an eternal destination? Where is yours going to be? Well, for the Christian, it's heaven. The Bible teaches in order to become a Christian, you must, upon hearing the word of God, reading the Bible, studying it, maybe having someone help you understand it, you'll choose whether or not you want to believe it. If you believe it, You'll do what it says. All the commands in order to become a Christian and learning what else to do when you become a Christian and how to live the Christian life. But it goes on and, and we're told that we must change. Once we believe, we must believe it enough that we want to change. That we want to repent is the word. Repent of our old lives. Repent of our sins. And we'll confess our faith in Jesus Christ. And we'll be baptized in water. <coughs> For the forgiveness of sins as soon as we know that we need to. We don't need to wait for two or three months or weeks down the road. We need to do it now as we see the examples in the Bible, the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter 8. We need to be, be baptized for the forgiveness of sins. Acts 2, 38. And upon becoming a Christian through baptism, we need to live faithfully. We can't Become a Christian by being baptized and, and start to walk in a new life and say, okay, I'm a Christian now. I can go back to doing whatever I want. That's not the way God has it. That's not his plan. His plan is for you to live faithfully. The word Christian means adherent to Christ or disciple of Christ or follower of Christ. Christ did good things. He came to seek and save that which was lost. If we're going to wear his name Christian, just like we wear the name American, for those of us who are from America, we wear the name America. American, we do what America does. We have to follow the American rule. If we're going to follow Jesus and wear his name, we've got to follow his laws and what the Bible says. If you're not a Christian this morning, do not wait until it's too late. If you're someone who has been a Christian in the past and, and you've fallen away, come back to God for repentance <coughs> and prayer. If we can help you, let us know at any time. If you want to become a Christian, let us know at any time. You can contact us. You can email me at wbdj105 at aol.com. You can call me at 304-676-9286, whatever the case may be. If we can help you spiritually, let us know. We thank you for joining us this morning. We will hopefully be here on Wednesday evening around 7 o'clock for a Bible study and, and, and possibly next week at, at 1 o'clock again. Uh, depending on what the uh, health officials tell us to do. We thank you for joining us. Whatever we can do for you here at the Washington Street Church of Christ, let us know. We'll have one more song, and then we'll be led in prayer.
our closing song this afternoon will be number 652, Oh How I Love Jesus. <clears throat> There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing. It's worth, it sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. this afternoon and in worshiping God on this Lord's Day. Let us pray together. God, our Father in heart in heaven, we approach thy throne of grace this afternoon. Thank you for this Lord's Day that you bless us with, that we can come and gather in thy name and worship you, the only true and living God, no matter where we may be, here or at home or away from home. We know we'll be blessed by worshiping you. Father, we, we pray for your blessings upon this country and the world under these current conditions. We pray that we're able to defeat this virus that has spread globally. Pray to be with the medical leaders that they be able to find a remedy for this disease sooner than later. Father, we're thankful for your church realizing that uh, your son died for it, realizing that we can come and, and be together wherever we may be. Father, pray your blessings upon the sick of our congregation. You know who they are and what they're facing and the ailments and challenges that they have. We pray your blessings upon them. Be with the family members tending to them, Father. We're thankful for this avenue of prayer that we can come and talk to you together and privately when we're apart. We pray and ask for forgiveness of our sins as we come to you in repentance, forgiving, asking for forgiveness of those things that we have done contrary to your word and also things that we leave undone that we should do according to that will. Father, pray to be with us all until we come again to worship uh, however and whenever that is. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <laughs>